Hey, Robin Ramos here, founder and author of TechnologyMarketingToolkit.com, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to get your marketing to really pay off with real, consistent, deliverable, measurable results that you can take to the bank. Not, well, we got our name out there, or I don't know, it worked, maybe it worked a little bit, maybe it didn't. And this is all going to be about the four M's, the four M's that you need to get right whenever you're planning a campaign. Because one of the questions I get a lot from IT services businesses is sort of, you know, how do I come up with a campaign? Like, where do I start? I think is kind of where they, where, what they think. So I'm going to walk you through this, these four M's. And at the road show that's coming up, we're going to be going into a deep dive into these four things. But just watching this video is going to get your mind around some things that you're probably doing that is causing you to not be able to get the results that you want. And if you follow or pay attention to some of the tips I'm going to give you in this video, I think you're going to see a dramatic increase in the results that you're getting with each campaign. So I think before we even get into the four M's, one of the things I want to share with you is that I think a lot of IT services businesses, they grossly underestimate the effort and the challenge they have in selling IT services and support. Because first of all, the reality is nobody wants to buy what you're selling. And I know that sounds really hurtful and all that, but the reality is nobody wants to spend money on IT services because it's not something that's a luxury item that you can enjoy. It's not something like you can brag about. It's not even an experience. I mean, we, we can say it's an experience because your, your computer works, but people kind of expect that it should work anyway. So they really don't want to spend money on it. They look at it almost like a necessary evil and you know it, they'll wait until their systems are completely outdated and they're forced to upgrade before they really do anything about it. So that's like hurdle number one. Then the other challenge there is it's really hard to prove a return on investment for IT support and services. Now you can make an argument of, well, you'll have less downtime and your employees will be more productive. And, and some business owners, they get that. They, they kind of intrinsically understand that. But when you start going, well, you know, what's your hourly rate per employee? And if we have this many hours of downtime, this is what you're saving. You know, it's kind of cowboy math. The reality is most business owners, yeah, they know that it's an inconvenience and a major pain in the ass and, and all that for them to be down, but they don't maybe experience it that often. So when you sit down and try and show there's a return on investment and ROI for it, it's really hard to prove. Also, when you're doing marketing for IT services, all that aside, most of the people who buy your services and support, which is, by the way, a very small percentage of the marketplace. So like if you even think about it, the number of people who currently outsource their services and support is a very small pond within a very huge ocean of businesses in your area. But when, they, when they're thinking about it, they're usually in a contract already, or they have somebody else that's supporting their computer network. And the, the big problem is they might not even know that they're being underserved. So they are just, kind of making do with what the who they've got. Maybe they're not 100% thrilled, but they're not unhappy enough to do anything about it. And without any pain, without any angst, without any sort of perceived high need, they're not going to take any action. And then on top of that, you've got this attention deficit disorder that everybody has. So I think back in the 1970s, they estimated the average person saw about 500 ads a day. Today, with social media and cell phones and the internet exploding and a number of websites and TV channels that we have that are going radio stations, we've got satellite radio now, they estimate that the average person is exposed about 5,000 advertisements per day. So it ends up just being this white noise in addition to all the crises that are going on. I mean, think about in your own business, how overwhelmed you feel day to day with all the problems and the challenges you've got. There's so much you've got to pay attention to that the things that you pay attention to are the ones that have the biggest problem. So if, if I'm a business owner and I'm dealing with problems like we're not making enough sales and we've got customer service problems, we've got growth issues, I've got problems with our vendors. You know, if my IT is not great, but it's okay and we're surviving on it, I might not put any attention there. It's going to take something to really wake me up in order for me to even want to pay attention to it. So just, you got to think of it that way. Now, when you or most IT service companies start marketing their business, that's why when they send out like a random postcard to some list that they've downloaded from somewhere and it basically just has a laundry list of the things that you do and you do it one time and they get no response and then they're kind of sitting there going, 
well, geez, why didn't that work? And that's because you have to realize the immense difficulty it, it takes to get through to a decision maker, get their attention, make them interested in what, you, what you're offering, get them to actually take action, which is pick up the phone and call you and set an appointment or go to your website and download something or give an email address or something like that. You've got to understand that you've got to put some real thought and effort into this, not just kind of give it a half-assed thought and think about it a little bit and just random attempts at, at getting marketing because if you're not really going to be a serious student about this then you're forever going to be struggling to get more clients and you're forever going to be writing checks one thing after another trying this trying that wasting a lot of time wasting a ton of money and really not getting ahead of the game so these four m's are things that you're going to have to man master if you're going to really truly grow your IT services business and not only grow it, but grow it by getting the top choice customers and clients that you want. All right, so let's dive in. I'm going to give you um, a quick overview. The first M is market. Now, this is going to save you a lot of angst if you listen to me, and I feel like I've gone over this a million times. You have to start with who you're selling, not what. Now, I was just at a conference, and I can't remember the person who said this, but a person that was speaking said, I'll tell you what I'm selling once you tell me who I'm selling it to. Because the who determines what is the message going to be? What media are you going to use? What are you going to sell? Because what you sell is going to determine on the solution that they actually will want, right? So um, you would market to a medical practice different than you would market to like a Fortune 500 company, right? Or different than you would to a school or a nonprofit. So the who really determines a lot. And it's still to this day, no matter how much I harp on it, when I bring a, a group of IT business owners together and I ask them to clearly articulate who their target market is, their ideal slam dunk customer, almost none of them can do it. They give me an answer like, well, anybody with 10 to 100 or 150 computers. Well, that is just as broad as you can. That's not a target market. First of all, a, a CEO that's got 100 computers is way different in needs and in, in what they're looking for, their experience with IT support than somebody who's got maybe 10. And then you get into the niche. So if somebody's in a um, highly regulated field like medical or financial, they're going to have a different set of criteria than, let's say, somebody in nonprofit or a school or you get into a CPA's office. So number one is you got to have a really clear target market. And at the Roadshow, we're going to be deep diving into this. And I'm actually going to walk you through an exercise. So when you leave the Roadshow, you're going to know exactly who that sweet spot ideal customer is, which will then let you do number two, which is your message. Once you know who your market is, then you've got to create that compelling marketing message and offer. So every communication, be it an email, it could be canvassing, it could be a LinkedIn message, it could be an ad on Facebook. There's got to be a message that gets somebody attention because if you can't get your prospects attention it doesn't matter what you're selling if they're not going to read your ad and then you got to have an offer I hope your ads your websites all the marketing you're doing has some kind of CTA call to action to get that prospect to take action and you've got to sell them on taking action so some of the things you got to think about when you're creating message is how are you going to get their attention we've already covered that how will you make sure it's delivered and read so if you got an email, how are you going to make sure that they are going to actually stop and read your email, not just hit the delete, delete, delete button like most people do, or the shift and down arrow and highlight it all and then hit delete. you got to make sure it's delivered. How are you going to get through the spam filters? How are you going to get permission in the first place? Because I hope you're not sending emails to people who haven't given you permission to, right? That's that spam. And you're going to really ruin more relationships than you're going to build. So you got to get people to get their attention, get them to want to give you their email and want to be in communication with you. And the only reason someone's going to pay attention is if the message that you're sending them resonates with them. And the only way you can create messages that resonate, really resonate with people is if you know your target market. So it all comes full circle. Then how are you going to get them interested to learn more? So I might read a headline of an ad or I might read your sales letter. If it's not building interest, they're going to pitch it. That people are sorting their mail over the trash can. They're deleting email like crazy. They've got gatekeepers um, that they're they're screening calls coming in. So they're trying to block ads as much as they can. So even if you briefly get their attention, you got to then use the rest of your communication to build interest, to build that pain, to help them understand how they're being underserved, to talk about a result that you can deliver for them that they're not getting right now and get them excited about it. Then what results? can you promise to deliver? Now here's a real key question. I know most of you watching this want to have appointments with more prospects. 
So my question to you is, if I'm a prospect and I meet with you, what value are you going to provide me? So I meet with you, I'm gonna take time out of my day, I'm gonna to have to do the nice nice and I'm, maybe I'm an introvert and I don't really like talking to other people and I don't like meeting strangers and I know you're gonna follow up and pitch me and all this, I know there's gonna be money involved. You know, you've gotta have a really strong value proposition for the appointment itself. So here's a question to ask yourself. What value can you deliver to that prospect in advance or during the sales process that even if they don't buy, they're gonna see value. They're gonna to wanna to engage with you. Even if they don't buy, they thank you after the process. And in the road show, there's actually a, a campaign I'm gonna give you that I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Also, how you build authority and trust. If a prospect reads your uh, campaign, you got their attention, they're mildly interested, the question they're having is, can I trust this person? Is this person for real? Do they really know what they're talking about? And you've gotta be able to, to, to do that. And how are you gonna remove that risk? Because if I talk to you, how do I know you're gonna actually be pleasant to work with and deliver on what you say? And there's ways in marketing campaigns to do that. And again, we're gonna cover it in the road show. And also, what's your CTA? What's your gonna be your call to action? So a key question again, if I respond to your marketing, what's in it for me specifically? And if what's in it for me is, well, we'll talk about your computer needs or your IT needs, well, that's not a whole lot of value for me. I mean, I, it's gotta be something more. So if you were to say the sentence to a prospect, give me just 30 minutes in your office and I guarantee I can show you how to do X, either get a result or resolve a problem, what would come after that? What would be that X? Then you really gotta work hard on coming up with that or you're gonna be struggling to get appointments. And again, at the Roadshow, I'm gonna give you a campaign that has been, uh, you know, it's a campaign that I've had for years and it's by far the single most successful marketing communication campaign that I have ever written. It has sold more IT services, managed services than any other letter, any other campaign that I have ever done. And I'm gonna give it to you at the Roadshow. Not only am I gonna give it to you, but I'm actually gonna break it down and show you how the letter does all these things so you can recognize what's going on and replicate it as well. And if you think that was just a big tease to get you to come to the Roadshow, you're right. So sign up for the Roadshow. Now, step three is then media. So you've got your market, now you know what message, but now how are we gonna get that message to our target market? And you wanna use a multimedia approach, what we call it multi-channel marketing or multimedia marketing. And you don't wanna just rely on email. That's a, it's a big mistake. Everybody wants to do the free, cheap, easy stuff. They wanna do email, they wanna run Facebook ads, and they wanna tweet. Well, guess what? Your target market might not be on Facebook looking for IT services and support. So you gotta ask yourself, where is my prospect going? What events are they going to? Where are they? Where can I get that list? And again, this is a, a big topic. I'm not gonna be able to cover it in this, in this uh, video, but I'll say one really important key tip. When you know your target market, the next question is, where do those people hang out? What do they pay attention to? What do they read? What events do they go to? And see, if you think you know your target market, but you can't tell me, well, who your target market, what events they go to, um, who they buy from, what publications they read, uh, what events they go to. If you can't tell me that, you don't know your target market, all right? So that, once you know your market, then you know the media approach, okay? So for example, if you're dealing with executives, C-level executives at a, um, a multi-million dollar organization, probably Facebook isn't the best way to reach that person, all right? Because they're probably not on Facebook, or they might be not looking, at least if they are, they're not there looking for you, all right? So it might need a more targeted approach. And you might not have their email, nor may you be able to get on, uh, buy their email address somewhere. So then you're left with either direct mail or telemarketing or perhaps maybe LinkedIn or trying to get a referral in. So you can see the media strategy is gonna be determined by the prospect you wanna get. Also, if you're selling into, say, like a doctor's office, then you're gonna to have to talk to the office manager, usually not the doctor. And the office manager, they're usually a 40-something mom, you know, they're, they're 40, 50 years old. They're, they uh, might not, again, be on Facebook or LinkedIn. They might not be very computer savvy. They're very relationship oriented. So using things like, for example, seminars or canvassing or referral marketing, 
direct mail even, that's gonna you know, be your target audience. Now maybe you're selling to young, hip, 20-somethings that are new startups. Well then social media might be the absolute best way. But again, you don't wanna just pick a media because it's cheap and easy. Like, let's just do email on Facebook, all right? You base your media strategy based on your target market and how are you going to reach those people in a cost-effective way. And then the fourth thing you gotta do is math. Marketing and selling is still a numbers game. And if you don't know things like what's your allowable cost per lead, what's your allowable cost per sale, LTV, which is lifetime value of a client, your average closing percentage and average sale, again, you're gonna have a real hard time budgeting for marketing because what you can spend to get a customer it largely will determine the marketing budget. And you wanna look at your sales funnel. And a sales funnel is gonna tell you how many leads are we getting in, how many are actually turning into appointments, how many of those appointments are turning into proposals, how many proposals are closing, what's the dollar amount, maybe first year of a customer, and what's the dollar amount for a customer over their their lifetime and knowing those numbers is critical if you're going to be serious about sales and marketing just like you need to know numbers for running a successful IT business you got to know utilization um, there's uh, you got to understand profit and loss you know those costs that go into delivering your services you got to know those numbers because if you don't know those numbers you're going to go bankrupt all right and same with marketing you've got to know the numbers and again at the roadshow I'm going to go into it like a deeper dive here and I'm going to actually give you averages for the industry as far as allowable cost per lead, allowable cost per sale. I'll show you how to calculate those numbers. I'll show you average conversion rates on websites and all of those kind of n uh, marketing math numbers that you need, okay? So what I need you to do now, if you found this valuable, and this was a quick skim over the top, is go to IT Marketing Roadshow. You might already be watching it here um, on the website, but, but go here and register. So it's $100 refundable deposit if you're a client of mine. If you're not a client, it's only $299. And folks, let me tell you, that is going to be well worth your investment. Two days with me, deep dive, and we're gonna go, we're gonna cover the four M's, and we're really gonna give you the tools and the understanding, the confidence, and the capabilities you need to be able to go back and implement marketing, not just ideas, but I'm actually going to give you templates and campaigns and tools that you can use. So go ahead, go to itmarketingroadshow.com, register, and I'll look forward to seeing you there.